live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. When you think of some of the greatest defensive players in the history of the New England Patriots, this guy might come to mind. Willie McGinnis was a great player for a really long period of time. He spent 15 seasons in the NFL, 12 of which came with the Patriots. Not only did he finish his Pats career with 78 sacks, but he had an additional 16 sacks in the postseason, which is an NFL record. He won three Super Bowls, played an instrumental part in New England creating a dynasty during the first half of the 2000s, and made it to the Pro Bowl twice. There's a reason that McGinnis is in the Patriots Hall of Fame. But what you might not know is just how close that was to never happening. Because as it turns out, he was moments away from getting chosen by the Dallas Cowboys. At the 1994 NFL Draft, the Cowboys were dangerously close to executing a trade that would have changed NFL history forever. And this is the story behind how Willie McGinnis was almost a Dallas Cowboy. Before I talk about the draft and the proposed trade, we need some context as to why the Cowboys were looking at McGinnis in the first place. Obviously, in 1993, the Dallas Cowboys were really good. They just won their second straight Super Bowl, and even though they had lost head coach Jimmy Johnson due to conflicts between him and Jerry Jones, which is putting it very mildly, they were still the favorites to win it all in 1994. It's tough to say that there were any weaknesses on that 1993 team. However, if there was any problem with the Cowboys in 1993, it was their pass rush. It wasn't very good. The team only finished with 34 sacks, which ranked in the bottom half of the league. Now again, keep in mind, Dallas had a great defense that season. They were second in the league in points allowed, and they only allowed more than 21 points twice. But in both of those games, both of which were losses, they failed to sack the quarterback, with Washington and Atlanta winning rather convincingly since their quarterbacks had all day to throw. The leading player on the team in sacks was Tony Tolbert, who only had seven and a half. That ranked 37th in a league with 28 teams. And for some perspective, there were three players on the Oilers that season who had more sacks than the leading man on the Cowboys. The second leading man in sacks, Jim Jeffcoat, was going to be 33 years old, and had been in a noticeable decline from the 1980s, when he was routinely posting double-digit sack seasons. While I don't want to say their pass rush was a problem, since again we're talking about a team that was good enough to win back-to-back -back championships, it was definitely the weakest link. And with that, the Cowboys were eyeing pass rushers in the draft. The man they wanted was Willie McGinnis. He was an All-American at USC who finished his career with 29 sacks. With the exception of Ohio State defensive tackle Dan Wilkinson, who was projected by everyone as the number one pick and was even receiving some lofty comparisons as the next Reggie White, McGinnis was widely considered to be the best defensive player in the entire draft. Just one small problem. The Cowboys had picked number 28. How the heck were they going to get all the way up to the top five and even have a shot at getting him? Well, they started calling and they found a trade partner. The Cowboys were in a bit of a pickle with one talented player on their team. That player was wide receiver Alvin Harper. He was drafted by the Cowboys in the first round of the 1991 NFL Draft, as they needed someone to pair alongside Michael Irvin. And by this point, Harper was unhappy with the Cowboys and was unhappy with his role on the team. Harper was a solid player who was averaging over 20 yards per reception and was coming off of a fantastic postseason, where he scored a touchdown in each of the first two games and then made the catch at Super Bowl 28 that may have sealed the deal and officially dented any chances of Buffalo coming back. But he had made it very clear that when his contract ran out at the end of the 1994 season, that he was going to test the waters in free agency and leave. With Harper's departure after the 1994 season all but inevitable, the Cowboys decided to use him as trade bait, so they could at least get something for him. And there was one team that was really interested in his services. That team was the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams had one of the worst passing offenses in football during the 1993 season, and they were struggling heavily at wide receiver. They didn't have a single receiver crack the 1,000-yard mark that season. Their top guy was Henry Ellard, but he had just left in free agency to sign with Washington. This meant that their new top guy was Flipper Anderson, who only had 552 yards that year and had a career-worst year in yards per catch. And just talking receivers, their next top guy at the time was Todd Kinchin, who had 137 yards. That's it. Their receiving unit was absolutely dire. It was the worst in football. Dallas and Los Angeles were able to strike up a deal. The Rams had the fifth pick in the draft. Dallas would give up Alvin Harper, and in return, get pick number five. Some reports indicate that the Cowboys would have also given up a second round pick, while others don't include this. 
but we know for a fact that Harper and the fifth pick were a part of the deal. However, the trade was contingent on one thing. Willie McGinnis had to be on the board. If McGinnis wasn't on the board, the deal was off. Fortunately for the Cowboys, they were pretty confident that McGinnis would be there at pick number five. New England didn't show a whole lot of interest in him during the pre-draft process. They brought him in for one meeting, which McGinnis described as interesting, as Parcells basically did nothing but rip into him for a bad game that he had. Dallas was so confident, in fact, that they had multiple representatives show up to a draft party that McGinnis was holding. After the first three players were off the board, McGinnis was still there. Things were looking promising for Jerry Jones and company. They were going to make McGinnis a cowboy. And then, Commissioner Paul Tagliabue announced the pick. Willie McGinnis to the Patriots. Little did we know that for every team involved, including the Rams, that would change NFL history forever. Jerry Jones was visibly frustrated when McGinnis was chosen. He didn't do a very good job hiding his frustration on camera. And Jones admitted after the draft that they were trying everything to get McGinnis, as he called it the most high-pressure, convoluted, pressure-packed negotiation I've been a part in regarding a draft pick. But with that move, the deal for pick number five was off, meaning that Alvin Harper was going to stay on the Cowboys. Dallas knew that he would be walking at the end of the season, but they figured it was worth trying to win another title with him by running it back rather than getting a top five pick especially since the receiver class wasn't particularly strong on paper in the first round. The Cowboys eventually got a different defensive end, drafting Arizona State man Shante Carver. He's one of the biggest busts in Cowboys history, playing just four years in the NFL with 11 and a half sacks and even being suspended six games in 1996 due to a violation of the league's anti-drug policy. As for the Rams, because they didn't trade for Harper, they decided that it was worth it to draft a receiver high. With that, in the second round, they chose a man you may have heard of by the name of Isaac Bruce. Bruce played 14 years with the Rams, finished his career with over 15,000 receiving yards, and is a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. If that Harper trade goes down, I highly doubt that he becomes a Ram. And who knows how that impacts the greatest show on turf? This is a classic case of you win some and you lose some. Recently, I made a video on how something like this happened to the Cowboys in 1990 where they were ready to draft someone, had the details of the trade worked out, only for that player to be chosen one pick before, forcing the Cowboys to settle for someone else. That time, they settled for Emmett Smith, which worked out considerably better than this draft right here. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But it's crazy to think about just how different NFL history looks if that trade goes down. Do the Patriots still win those three Super Bowls? Do the Cowboys dominate the second half of the 90s like they did the first half? Do the Rams win the Super Bowl at the end of the decade without Isaac Bruce? It's crazy how a failed trade by just one pick changed the entire history of the National Football League. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JarGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.